It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. We are now in our 36th season, and we invite you to play along to match wits with our outstanding students today who hail from Martin Luther King Middle School and Benjamin Tasker Middle School. And you know, we've had to change things because of the pandemic. We can't have the students in the studio. They are all on Zoom out there at their schools, but we've kept some things the same. Yes, we've kept our, kept our regular six categories, green things, zoo parade, body systems. Let's get physical, science, potpourri, and dateline science. Each category will have three questions, a five, a 15, and a 25. For 18 questions for each of our teams, different questions, but of equal difficulty. And as we always do, we give 50 points to the team just for showing up and looking as good as it does. So let's get started. Let's meet our first team from Benjamin Tasker Middle School and say hello to Fallon. Fallon, would you wave to everybody? Because I know you're our captain. Hey, Fallon, good to have you on the show. And Arna is here. Hey, Arna, welcome to the Science Bowl. Nice wave and a shout out to everyone watching. And Braylon, Braylon, nice to have you here with us again. Because I know a lot of our players today have been on our show before. And uh, we know we're going to have a good game today. All right. If you're ready, Tasker, let's begin. Let's get to the green things category with your first question worth five points. Here we go. You might say that the long-lived giant sequoia tree is the lord of the what? Since it has laid down so many of them over the years. The lord of the what? Uh, I think it's the lord of the rings. Say it again, please. Lord of the Rings. It is Lord of the Rings, yes. Dendrochronology, you count the number of rings, and it gives you an idea how old that tree is. Good start, five points. Here we go to 10 points. Did you thank a green plant today? That's not a silly question. You should, since plants provide two critical products through photosynthesis for us. Name them both. Glucose and oxygen. You got it right. Perfectly indeed. Our food and our oxygen, without the plants, we would not be here. Good answer. 25 points. Last one in the green things category. Often, desiccated plant seeds will wait for thousands of years until just the right amount of water is available for them to survive. Only then will those seeds do this. Be specific. They will germinate. That's it. That's the only point. Then they will swell up, and out comes that first shoot and epicotyl, and it's hypocotyl, and it, it's starting out on its journey. Germinate was the right answer. Excellent. Let's go to the zoo for five points. There's yet another movie in the science fiction series that shows how these deadly cartilaginous fish can get swept up into a tornado and then ran da rain down on unlucky people. Name that fish. Piranha? Not piranha. Sharks. Sharknado. There were some of those crazy movies. Sharknado. All right, let's move into the 15 point question. Writer Kenneth Graham wrote about this amphibian who, as Walt Disney shows us in an animated film, went on a wild ride. I believe it's frogs. Oh, you're so close. It's a toad, Mr. Toad's Wild Adventure, Mr. Toad. 25 points, zoo. Birds like pelicans and bald eagles are mostly piscivorous, P-I-S-C-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Pelicans and bald eagles, mostly piscivorous, meaning if you know about the astrological sign Pisces, that their diets are made up almost entirely of these. Fish. Fish, fish. fish, you got it for 25. That's, what, what, that's the way to do it. Let's go to the body systems. Three more questions for you for your first break. There's a visual. Check out this picture. 
If you go to see the doctor and you start feeling nervous, what body measurement can shoot well above the normal rating of 120 over 80, measured by this device? Blood pressure. Blood pressure it is. That's a sphygmomanometer. Yes, it is. Excellent. Multiple choice for 15 points in body systems. If a person needs to have a hepatectomy, H-E-P-A-T-E-C-T-O-M-Y, if a person needs to have a hepatectomy, are they donating part of their liver to another person, having their liver removed, or receiving a new liver? A hepatectomy. Are they donating, donating part of their liver? Donating, have their living removed, or receiving a new liver? I'm sorry, what was your answer? Sorry, we were saying donating. Donating. Actually, anytime you see ectomy, like a tonsillectomy, it means something is taken out. So it's when the liver is removed was the correct answer there. Let's go to 25 points. Last question for you in the body systems category. End of the first half. If you're suffering from laryngitis, you might go to an ENT doctor. E as in elephant, N as in Nancy, T as in Tom. You might go to an ENT doctor who specializes in treating diseases of what three body parts? Ear, nose, and throat. You got them all for 25 points. That's the way to start that game, Benjamin Tasker. You end this first round with 150 points. You're cooking. Keep it up. We'll be back with you in just a few moments to talk to you. It is now time to meet that team from Martin Luther King Middle School, and they are all veterans of the Science Bowl. We're always, always, always glad to see them back. Let's meet, first of all, the captain, uh, Martin. Martin, nice to see you. Could you wave to everybody, please? Thank you. This is Martin's last year with us. He's been with us right through elementary school and middle school. Say hello also to Bailey. Hey, Bailey. Nice to have you back Hi. on the show as well. And uh, formerly of the Bond Mill Championship team and now with Martin Luther King, Kelvin Stewart. Hey, Kelvin. Wave to everyone if you would. All great players. All right. Again, you have 50 points just for showing up, and let's see if you can add to that tally. I know you will. Let's go to your questions. Let's go to the green things category, a 5, a 15, and a 25. Here's the five-point green things question for you. If you hug a ponderosa pine tree and put your nose very close to this, the tree's outer covering, you'll find it smells just like vanilla. Uh, I think bark. 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 Yeah, the bark smells just like vanilla. Good start. Let's go to the 15-point question in green things. It's a multiple choice. Is a monoculture, M-O-N-O-C-U-L-T-U-R-E, is a monoculture, which is the following, a field full of the same kinds of crops like corn, a forest with at least two different kinds of trees, or a flat plain like a savanna where there are, there are very few trees? Um, I think it's the first, the first one. I think it's the first one. The it's the first one. one. It is indeed a field full of the same kinds of crops. Absolutely. Let's go to 25 points in green things. If you're a student studying plants and your specialty is agroforestry, the agro, A-G-R-O, is short for this. What do you think? Agriculture? Agriculture? That's what I'm thinking. Agriculture? Yeah. Agriculture? It is indeed agriculture. Yes, indeed. All right, let's move on to the zoo. You're doing great. For five points in the zoo. It's been discovered that this kind of bird, famous for being taken into shafts by coal miners to detect poisonous gases, can also pump up its own immune system if it sees other birds in the flock getting sick. Sick. What do you think? It's a canary. Yeah, canary. Canary. Agree. It's a canary. It is indeed the canary in the coal mine. For 15 points in the zoo. This is an interesting question. The internal structure of an elephant's trunk, except for the nostrils, is similar to an octopus's tentacle and this human sense organ. 
knows because of those senses. Yeah. Um, um, what human sense or do you think it could be nose? I think it could be nose. I think it could be nose. Nose? Ah, except for the nostrils, similar to an octopus's tentacle, which it uses, because an octopus can't breathe, it's the tongue. It's the tongue is the correct answer there. All right, still doing well. Let's do the 25-point question in the zoo. It was noticed that there were fewer car collisions with deer in Minnesota after the state reintroduced this lupine predator that had earlier been almost wiped out by hunters. Wolves. 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 Wolves is correct. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You're doing so well. Let's go to the body systems. Three more questions before the first half ends. Body systems for five points. I want you to rhyme and I want you to look at this picture. We have a visual for you for this five point question. On Twitter, there appeared this rhyme about yawning. And I quote, Yawning in public is simply outrageous because everyone knows that yawning's what? what? Contagious. 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 Contagious is right, indeed. For 15 points, listen to these words, but don't be fooled. The answer is easy. Sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia is the official medical name for this condition caused when you eat ice cream too fast. Uh, brain, brain freeze. freeze. A brain, brain freeze. freeze it is. And for 25 points in body systems, criminals often think they can run away and hide. But there's an expression that says the law has a long one of these limbs. Arm. 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 I would think arm. An arm is a limb. Yes. Yes. Arm. arm. It is arm. It's called the long arm of the law. <laughs> they get their man. Indeed. Which means you end the first half. Martin Luther King with 170 points. You're really doing well. We'll see you again in just a few moments. Keep up your good work. All right. It is now time to welcome back that team from Benjamin Tasker to find out a little bit about the players, some of whom have played our game before. Let's start with the captain, Fallon. And Fallon, what do you like about Science Bowl? Why did you want to do this? I wanted to do science school because I wanted to expand my knowledge of science, and it's also a fun way to learn. It is a fun way to learn, and we hope you're having fun. That's what this is all about, because you've already proven yourselves. You have proved yourself as a great student. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, and it's so nice to have you. What do you want to do someday with your life? Um, I want to be a cardiac surgeon. Wow. So you've got a lot of schooling ahead of you. You've got college and medical school and internships and specialty school. So... Uh, uh, something tells me you're a disciplined young lady and you're going to make it happen. Make that dream happen. Keep up your good work. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's talk to Arna. Hey, Arna, good to have you back with us here today. Tell us about uh, your in motivation for being here today. Well, I, I decided to join Science Bowl because I have always like liked science and like learning about why uh, like new things in the world. And I joined because I thought it was something fun to do. And I would also be able to challenge myself to see, you know, how much I know about science. Boy, you couldn't have said it any better because, yes, we want you to learn some things by being on the show, but we want to know what you know already, and you're impressing us with your knowledge. Where do you get all your science knowledge? How did you get so good? Probably, I'd have to say I have to give credit to my teachers and my parents because they always inspire me to, you know, like learn new things, and they also teach me really well. Wow, what a nice tribute to your family there. Thank you. And let's talk to your other player here. Uh, Braylon, nice to have you on the show here. Uh, tell me about your plans for the future. And t first of all, tell me what's on that blackboard behind you there. What's all that? I like it. I have no idea. It's a lot of adults, <laughs> 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 um, right? The majority of that is like, nice well, But certainly, let's, you know, let's us know that you're in school. I appreciate yeah. that. Have you been on the show before? Yes, I've been on uh, here on fifth grade. I know, and that's why, I mean, you're so good. I'm going to ask you what I asked Arna. How did you get so good? How do you know all your science? I don't know. I mean, like, I'm just that type of person, like, if most of the times you give me a question, like how you do on science, well, I'd most likely be an to answer it. Also, I got my science knowledge just from doing science classes and, you know, other stuff that relates to science. 
I like yeah, doing but, like little thought experiments. Well, I can tell you're curious about the world and you're interested and you're inquisitive and that makes all the difference. What do you want to do someday? Have you thought about I, that? Um, I think it'll have to do with science, but also I want something that would like put my name in the history book. Not to be like that one person that they don't know about. I want to be like a person they know, like Dr. Martin Luther King or Marie Curie, like that. Yeah, I think we all want to leave a legacy. You know, we all yeah. want people to remember our name and that's a great goal. But along the way, make sure you're helping other people too. You know, that's the, yeah. that's the greatest thing you can do. Okay, it is now time to ask the second set of questions for our team from Benjamin Tasker. Let's go to the let's get physical category. I have a five, a 15, and a 25. So if you are ready, here we go. Let's get physical for five points. Today's most precise clocks are called atomic clocks. They are based on the behavior of these negatively charged subatomic particles that orbit an atom's nucleus. Neutron. Electron. Neutron. It is Neutron. electrons. Neutron. You got it. It is electrons. Thank you. Your first instinct was correct there. For 15 points, so-called ferrofluids, F-E-R-R-O, ferrofluids that are attracted to magnets, contain nanoparticles of F-E-O, an oxide of what chemical element? Iron. Iron it is, yes indeed. F-E, ferrous, ferro, always a prefix for iron. 25 points, you're doing well. While there are no sharknadoes <laughs> in real life, fish, frogs, tadpoles, and even an alligator once fell from the sky after being sucked up and dropped down on land by one of these tornado-like phenomena. Hurricane? Not hurricane. Oh, cyclone. Cyclone, cyclone. Cyclone. Not, not cyclone. A tornado over the water is called a water spout. A water spout. Water spouts will suck things up over the sea and sometimes drop them over land. Water spout is what we're looking for there. Let's go to Pope Brie for five points. The Monoceros constellation, M-O-N-O-C-E-R-O-S, the Monoceros constellation, is a group of stars that resembles this fictitious but highly popular animal. Um, Griffin? To answer, to answer that question, you had to parse that word, Monoceros. Mono means one, Ceros, means horn, like rhinoceros, a so unicorn. a one horn fic, fictitious animal. The correct answer there would have been was unicorn. Good try though, unicorn. For 15 points in potpourri. This is interesting. To clean the dirt from very old paintings, often damaged by humidity and light, artists use their own saliva since it's warm and contains these catalytic chemicals that can break down the fats and proteins of dirt. What do we call those catalytic chemicals that can break down fats and proteins? Is it amino acids? I'm not hearing from your other uh, colleagues there, Braylon. Oh, oh, sorry, we all said amino acids. You all said amino acids. Uh, that was a good try, it's enzymes. Enzymes, can, they help to catalyze reactions. They're called catalytic chemicals. All right, 25 points. This is quite interesting. The world's smallest cow, born recently, just 20 inches tall, is a Bhutan, B-H-U-T-A-N, a breed that has genes that purposely stunt growth. Since the genes are turned on when it gets hot, they're called these kinds of genes, named for what we used to measure temperature. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, you might have gotten distracted by the small cow. The small cow, this 20 inch tall cow, uh, has been purposely bred to be small. There are genes that help to stunt its growth. Well, genes in our bodies, they can be turned on and turned off by environmental factors. So since these genes, to make the cows short, get turned on when it gets hot, they're calling these genes 
these kinds of genes after the instrument we use for measuring temperature. Thermometer genes? That's exactly right. They're called thermometer genes. Absolutely right. Thanks for listening carefully to come up with that 25-point answer. All right, last three questions. Dateline for five points. Although his experiment to see if blondes really do have more fun ended inconclusively, this famous scientist fared better with his theory of evolution. We're looking, for, we're looking for the name of the scientist. He, he's very famous. He is very famous for his theory of evolution. He also did other, other experiments. He wanted, for instance, to see if blondes really do have more fun. He was not able to find any definitive proof to prove it or disprove it, but he's most be, he is best known for his theory of evolution. Guys, I know you know this. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, a survival of the fittest. Let's go to 15 points in Dateline. Thomas Edison, the man who invented the light bulb, was one of the privileged few who got to meet and have dinner with the builder of what tall structure in Paris, France, that was designed as a radio broadcasting tower and a meteorological station. The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower, Gustave Eiffel was his name. Good, 15 points. Last question of the game is a visual, and it's also a multiple choice. Look at this picture. Wow, that is one big goldfish. Goldfish, a kind of carp. Once swallowed as stunts by college students years ago, are now showing up in our lakes and streams and growing to the size of footballs as people release them from fish tanks and aquaria. Are these fish, as you see them now, known as endemics, exotics, or ephemerals? Endemics, exotics, or ephemerals? These much larger than usual goldfish. Showing up in lakes and streams. Could you please repeat the question? Goldfish, which were once swallowed as stunts by college students. Years ago, your parents and grandparents would take goldfish and swallow them. They thought that was a cool thing to do. Well, now, people who have goldfish, you know, they get tired of them. They're releasing them into lakes and rivers, and they're eating everything in sight and growing to the size of footballs. So they really, they don't belong in our lakes and streams, and they're certainly upsetting the food web. As a result, do we call them endemics, endemic species, exotic species, or ephemeral species? Let's, let's go with endemic, please. All right. Endemic means it's just something found like in one place, and exotic is something that doesn't belong. It's something from afar. So exotics was the right answer there. But I liked your reasoning there. All right. Great score. You end the game with 210 points. Let's see if that's going to be enough to win and to get you into that afternoon match with Kettering. Nice work there, Benjamin Tasker. We'll see you all in just a couple minutes. Let's now bring back that team from Martin Luther King Middle. All the students are veterans of our game. And as you've seen, they know how to play this game well. Let's talk to each one of them. Let's go to the captain, uh, Martin. And Martin, uh, I was Martin, telling, and Martin, I was telling at the very beginning yeah, that very beginning uh, you're an eighth that, grader now, and this is your last time on, on our show. Of course, course you can move on in our competition this year. Competition. What has Science Bowl what meant to you meant to over you these years? Over these years, um, it's it's been really fun since I've met a bunch of people who have similar interests to me, and I've bonded with them, which I've liked. I've also liked just the game in general. It's kind of like Jeopardy, and I like competition. So I've really enjoyed these years, and I'm going to miss it. And we would miss you. we will miss you too, but we're not going to say goodbye yet because uh, if you win this game, we're going to see you in more competitions. Uh, young man who likes to hike the Appalachian Trail and uh, he's a uh, uh, scientist through and through. Let's find out about uh, Kelvin. Hey, Kelvin, nice to have you back as well. Uh, tell us 
what you like about this game because you play it so well. Um, I just like uh, competition, and it's pretty fun, and it challenges me uh, about how much I know about science, and I enjoyed that, so that's why I keep playing the game. Now, are you a seventh or an eighth grader now? Seventh. So we can see you again next year, and we're happy about that. <laughs> keep up your great playing. And let's talk to the other member of your team, uh, uh, Bailey. Bailey, I know you've been on the show before, and let me ask you, what is it about Science Bowl that keeps you coming back? Well, it's mainly the fact that I enjoy the competition and that I get to hang out with a lot of new people that have similar interests to me. Absolutely. Speaking of interest, have you thought about a career yet? Um, actually, I have, and I think I want to be a forensic psychologist. Very good. Forensic psychologist. Uh, forensics is very big in our culture now. It seems like uh, there's so many television shows that indulge that and... Um, how satisfying to be able to get to the bottom of a, of a certain crime. All right, it is now time to ask the last nine questions of the Martin Luther King team. So let's go to the let's get physical category for your five point question. Here it is. Well, Siri, S I R I, is the name of a virtual assistant. Siri, C I R R I, is the plural form of what phenomena seen in the sky that are responsible for various kinds of precipitation? What do you guys Do you know? Huh? Is it cloud? Cloud? Cloud. Just say cloud. Clouds? Clouds it is, yes. Cirrus clouds, and you pluralize it with cir e. Absolutely right. And can I ask you guys, while I'm asking a question, could you uh, mute yourselves so we don't get this little feedback here? But as soon as I'm finished, go for it. You can put it on. Let's go to the next question. It is the, let's get physical for 15 points. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station are partially shielded from the radiation in space by this field that surrounds the Earth and is known to help birds find their way as they migrate. Magnetic. Yeah, magnetic. Magnetic. You got it. It is the magnetic field. Another 15 points for you. Well done. Let's go to the last question, the 25-pointer, and let's get physical. While chlorine and bromine are both used as swimming pool water disinfectants, this chemical element in the same family is used by dentists to strengthen teeth and prevent cavities. Chloride. 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 Chloride or yes. chlorine. That is correct, yes. Let's go to Pope Brief for five points, and uh, let's show you a picture for the five-point question. Here's your visual. Thought to be almost unkillable, these tiny microscopic tardigrades don't survive, however, being fired from a gun. They are oftentimes likened to what other kinds of creatures, of which there are polar, black, and brown ursine varieties? Bears. Bears. Yes, bears. indeed. Bears. They are called water bears. Let's go to 15 points in potpourri. Children in some poor countries are malnourished because even though they eat rice, cookies, and chips, their diets are too low in this body-building nutrient? Protein. 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 Yeah. Protein. protein. Absolutely. Not enough protein. 25 points in potpourri. Most vaccines don't stop infections from ever happening. They mostly prevent people from getting severely ill. We know that as we've gone through COVID. If a vaccine does completely stop infections, it is known by this S initial term that means all bacteria and viruses are killed off. It's like a needle that's been heated by a flame. Give me that S initial term. Sterile? Sterilized. 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 Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Sterilization. Perfect. Last three questions for you. Here's Dateline for five points. One of our county's middle schools is named for Ernest Everett Just, a biologist who did research on cells often using the eggs of these kinds of creatures without backbones. What do you guys think? Invertebrates. 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 Because they don't have backbones. Invertebrates. Invertebrates. Invertebrates? Yes, indeed. The phylum invertebrata. Invertebrates is correct. For 15 points. 
Those of you that hike, and Martin will be interested in this, it's been discovered that certain tick bites can lead to alpha-gal disease, A-L-P-H-A-G-A-L, alpha-gal disease, in which the victims develop one of these A initial conditions, in this case to red meat. Eating meat can cause stomach problems, rashes, welts, and like one to peanuts, anaphylactic shock. Allergies. Allergies. Yes, Allergies. You, you can get a red meat allergy. Last question of the game, 25 points for you, Martin Luther King. Back in the 1950s, there was an epidemic of a disease that attacked the nervous system. It was called infantile paralysis. People stayed away from swimming pools and movie theaters to prevent its spread. Eventually, vaccines. The Salk and Sabin vaccines were developed to stop this disease, otherwise known by what name? Polio. Polio. Yeah, it's polio. It is polio. Poliomyelitis. Absolutely right. And that means with a perfect second round, you end the game with 305 points. Super work. Will that win the game? We'll be back in a moment to let you know. We hope you enjoyed today's game and you saw some virtuoso performances from our students. Um, I dare say it was probably tough for all of you to keep up. These young people, they know their science, they know their STEM subjects, all of them, and many of them. Whether or not they're going to scientific careers, you can see that our country is going to be in good hands because these young people, they are disciplined, they're smart, and even more so, they have they're good sports and they know how to work together. Our final tally today is Benjamin Tasker, 210, Martin Luther King, 305. So King, congratulations. We will see you in the next round playing Kettering Middle School. Let's give a nice round of applause to not only the team from Martin Luther King, but from Benjamin Tasker. All of you did a wonderful job. You acquitted yourselves wonderfully and we are proud of you. And the people watching at home and online will be impressed with all of your science knowledge. And we appreciate you being here today. I'm Dave Zarin, and I hope to see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Bye-bye now.